Присно Девы Марии, святых и славных и всехвальных апостол и всех святых. Аминь. This would have been his choice. He had no choice. He's dead. How can he appear before God in the costume of the infidels? The soldier must be buried in his uniform. That's the way. Before God, it is all the same. The soul of a man wears no clothes. He was seduced by a devil that lives in the Tsar's body. The Tsar does what he does for all of Russia. Do you think I am the only one? Everyone in Moscow knows he wants to put heretics and foreigners over us and get rid of his brother and the Regent Sophia. Our father has left us. The time will come when we will be grateful for what the Tsar has done. And Mishka's death will not have been in vain. You will never convince me. Never, never, never. Peter Alexeyevich. I'm sorry you had to hear of that. If I have to lose the love of my people to do what I have to do for them, so be it. Is all the time? Most of the time. Now go to sleep. No. If you're with me, I want you to think about nothing else. For six months before we could put our plan into action. In the meantime, my mother became ill. Your Austrian doctor has finished examining your mother. If you hadn't brought us to this terrible place with its cold and its draughts, anything. That's the trouble. I know. I'm going to join your father and wait for you there. Move you back to the Kremlin. You'll be much more comfortable there. They're gone. 
All the senior officers are gone. I can't reach anyone above the rank of captain. I don't understand how they could have all defected without our knowledge. It's very simple. Nichaev is working for Gordon. We should have attacked Peter at Preobrazhensk. Enough. There is no sense in our quarreling. You must take personal command of the Streltsy garrison and you must arrest Nichaev immediately. If you say so. I do! alone does not have that authority. You're forcing my hand. your weapons. They have orders to fire on us. The Colonel is correct. Leave peacefully or face our fire. I prefer to die. Then we will all die. And for what? For a woman who's trying to take the throne. Brothers, you're being used by an ambitious woman and her lover. Does Empress Sophia sound good to you? It is an affront to God. Why must Streltsy blood be shed over this? Four times. Take him. Now, let's deal with our real problem. <laughs> I am obliged to read this to you, Your Highness. That won't be necessary. I'm quite ready. Nietzscheev, how does it feel to betray your commanding officer? How does it feel to betray your Tsar, your highness? Where's your baggage, Sofia? I won't need baggage where I'm going. Where do you think that is? Heaven, I hope. The Tsar does not want your life. How very foolish. I still want his. I'll have to communicate that to him. Please do. I will. Do you want to chain me? No, I'd prefer to shoot you. of Prince Vasily Vasilievich Golitsyn, it has been determined that he was a pawn in the hands of the regent. And did not personally aspire to the throne or desire to harm the Tsar. The life of Prince Vasily Golitsyn shall therefore be spared. However, he shall be deprived of the rank of Boyar. His property shall be confiscated. 
and he is condemned to exile in the village of Ostrov in the uttermost northern regions for the remainder of his life. The order is signed by Tsar Peter under the seal of the state. Zarevna Sofia Alexevna, in punishment for her treason, shall enter the monastery of Novodevichi and be confined there for the remainder of her natural life. I guess it's true. There's someone for everybody. Don't mock them, Alexander. Love in any form is rare enough. I wonder if you've seen the last of her. I doubt it. She is, after all, your sister. love cannot be measured. How much do you love me, Peter Alexeyevich? As much as I can. I wish you could spend all your time with me. Time without you is empty. I spend as much time as I can. It's not as if I were free. I do have some responsibilities. Mm? Of course. Sire, Peter Alexeyevich. Tsar of all the Russias. Would that I could be a simpler man and live my life with you. Come in. Forgive me, Fidel Alexeyevich. Word from Dr. Lund. Your mother's illness is becoming more serious. She wants to see you. I have to go. I'm sorry. I may not see her for some time. I know that. Alexeyevich. Go on. Take care of him, Alexander. He'll be back. No, he won't. Bright little boy. God is generous. How old was I when I walked? Seven months. But you were unusual. Right? Don't expect too much. Too soon. Have you lost your senses? In the middle of the night? I have to bring him to her whenever she's awake. It's unbelievable that you would bring him to her at all. Death is a part of life. A child whom we 
very bizarre. Must be trained to that. But she's sick. Can't you understand that? I asked Dr. Lund. Growth cannot be caught by another person. Stop that! Where do you get these strange ideas about bringing up children? To get that tiny mind of yours away from that at a time like this. Sire, the Holy Father has arrived. My mother told me that you had tried to convince her and my wife that I am possessed by the devil, controlled by foreigners and heretics, and that these are the reasons I left the Kremlin. True. Moreover, you belittled my fear of a military threat to the throne and ordered lies to be circulated among the people by your priests. They circulated, but they were not lies. No one ordered anyone. I am now ordering you to stop. My sole concern is the preservation of the Orthodox Church. We have supported those people who strive for the same goals. That's not surprising. Your sister's temporal strength was not equal to her spiritual strength. Therefore, you won. And now we are prepared to recognize you as the sole reigning czar. All human institutions rise and fall. Tsars, dynasties, entire states and nations. Only the church is eternal. The church is a human institution. Defend it as such, because in my reign it will be kept in its proper place as that and nothing more. God, Holy Father, looks after many kingdoms and many churches. Peter Alexeyevich! You may be able to force the church, but you won't be able to force the Russian people to accept what you are doing. They never will.
What are you doing? You're soiling the sheets. My mother has just died, and you... You worry about soiled sheets! It was God's will. Your mother hated me from the very beginning. I've cried enough. People have gathered outside the command walls. There may be violence. Open the gates. It's too dangerous. I said, open the gates. May the Lord God and his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, Exorcise Satan from the soul and body of our master, Tsar Peter Alexeyevich. Amen. to me at this time at the time of my mother's funeral you say I am possessed of the devil anyone who believes that is a fool would the devil desire that holy Russia prosper that he be strong and that its people live in peace and prosperity we will catch up with the nations of the West we will regain those ports that were seized from our ancestors. We will build the ships, and your skills will produce their cargoes. Russians, hear me. I am your Tsar. I am your father, anointed by God to serve you. You are going to work hard and soberly. We may have to fight wars so that this country can realize its destiny. And I tell you now, I'm going to drag you, kicking and screaming if I have to, into the modern world.
Sire. What is it? The Tatras have sacked the village of Salsk and have again carried off all the women. And the men and children. Murdered, sire. All of them. We'll go back to Azov. This time, my water. Find a site for a shipyard within striking distance of the fort of Azov. We are going to build a navy no matter how long it takes, no matter what it costs. We leave no enemy alive on Russian soil. Russia had no tradition of the sea, no craftsmen who knew how to build ships. Months became years, as by trial and error, we floated the long boats and the barges that would take us down river to Azov and the Turks. And as our little navy grew, so did Alexis. I kept him with me so that he would know that the Tsar not only rules his people, he serves them, no matter what the cost. Come in. Nikita? Dispatches from Moscow, sire. And your command ship is ready. Thank you. of Boyars complains we're spending too much money on weapons. This says people are restless because their sons have been away too long. And Alexis, your mother is lonely. When can we go home, Papa? After we fight the battle. You're not taking him downriver to Azov. Only close enough to see and hear. I will stay with him. Tomorrow we sail our boats down the Don to where it meets the Donets River. And that will be our staging area. Yes, Papa. You know that this campaign goes far beyond punishing the Tatars. I intend to drive the Turks from Russia so that we have a waterway to the east. If we are going to sail the Black Sea, we need sea-going boats with deep keels. We will learn to build them as we build our river boats. Yes, Papa. And then we're going west to take the Baltic, if not in my lifetime, in yours. Aha, uh -huh, that's why he has to stay up so late every night. Say my prayers. Dear God, bless me and help me to be better. And when I die, let my soul join Grandfather Alexis and Great Grandfather Michael in heaven. God bless Mama and Papa and our Holy Father. Amen.
Good morning, gentlemen. This is the Don River, and this is the Donets River. We are here between the junction and our objective, the Fort of Azov. Tonight, under cover of darkness, our cannon barges will enter the Sea of Azov. They will mount their barrage from these positions. Sire. Colonel. Won't they be exposed to Turkish fire from the fort? The Turkish cannon will fall short. Has that been established? Our agents posing as Turkish traders have assured us of it. And if so on? Then we'll take many losses. <laughs> Gentlemen, this is our first battle. Our courage is yet to be tested. stay with him? No, no, he must learn to be brave. He's a child. He's my son. He will be the Tsar. They're coming too close. They'll be hit. Are you frightened, Alexis? A little, Papa. A soldier has to get used to that. Then it won't bother him. Something smells. It's the way death smells, Alexis. There are still bodies buried under these stones. treated Russian prisoners with unspeakable cruelty. Those who are innocent will be pardoned. Those who are guilty will be shot. Step forward.
This message is from Moscow. What is it? My brother has died, Alexis. Uncle Ivan? Tsar Ivan is dead. He was a living icon. You're now alone, the supreme autocrat, Peter Alexeyevich. Soul Tsar of all the Russias. How did Uncle Ivan die? I don't know yet. He was always sick and never very strong. You wanted to kill him, so you'd be the only Tsar. Your mother is wrong, Alexis. You believe me. I want to believe you. And Mama, too. But she says it's bad for me to do that. We'll have to do something about that. Where are the wounded being taken? To the Grand Mosque, sire, in the center of the town. See that they are treated well. the first of Russia. To Peter the first of Russia. To Sultan Mustafa the second of Turkey, without whom you and I would not have met. To Sultan Mustafa the second. Hmm. <laughs> To the Russian Navy. To the Russian Navy? Yes. It doesn't exist. <laughs> yes. How did an educated woman like you end up here? And where did you learn to drink like me? Hmm? <laughs> I was born a simple peasant somewhere near the Baltic. As my parents as a child was adopted by a German pastor, married to a Swedish soldier. Now I am a widow. And the Tartars held me as a prisoner. And you rescued me. A place like this holds many dangers. I never needed a protector. I don't need one now. If not a protector, then perhaps... 
A lover? <laughs> I think you and I are going to get along very well. Excuse me, Colonel. I've orders to ask the lady to join Captain Menshikov. Who gave you this order? Captain Menshikov. Can't a colonel countermand the orders of a captain? Not if he is the Tsar's best friend. Madam? <laughs> Too bad we could have gotten along very well. Very well. <laughs> Over here. To Peter the First of Russia. To Sultan Mustafa the Second of Turkey, without whom you and I would not have met. Hmm? <laughs> If I interfered with anything you were doing or about to do, I'm delighted. On the other hand, you might expect me to apologize. <laughs> Wouldn't I be a fool to refuse being snatched from an ordinary colonel by the Tsar's best friend? You and I are going to cut along very well. <laughs> of the Russian fleet to the health of those who love God, the Tsar, and the motherland! Where did you get this rotten uniform? Didn't we give you enough money to buy a decent one? What did you do with the rest of the money? I spent it all on the uniform, sire. Who sells these cheap uniforms? I'm asking you. You'd better ask Alexander Menshikov. What has he to do with this? He owns the company that sells the uniforms. were my men. You cheated with your cheap uniforms. Some of them gave their lives. Next time, you will. Confess! Tell him what he wants. He'll kill you. Bring yourself up and bring the lady to supper. Mm. 
once told me, you never get anywhere without getting your hands dirty. Yes, but you, you've chosen the wrong type of dirt. But did you expect me to like Savage? I was born poor. I always stole. We've all had to survive in our own way. Life hasn't been easy for you, has it? You found me, I was stealing from corpses. I'm despicable. <laughs> Sasha. Sasha. What am I going to do with you? <laughs> Dirty like everyone else's. You're a simple man. Don't be so hard on yourself. Catherine, why did you leave the room? Come back. I have things to do. What are you doing here, washing things in the morning? Come up to the room. Huh? Come on, come. Here we go. Leave me alone. Catherine! With victory at Azov, fanatics like Alexander's father could no longer convince the people that Satan guided their Tsar. The throne secure, I moved back to the wooden palace and Catherine came with me. It's beautiful. But... But it could catch fire easily. It does frequently. So does Moscow. Russians seem to accept that idea. Soon I will build a city of stone. Must you go to Moscow? Why? Are you lonely? I'm still feeling strange here. Yes. The servants and your men are very distant. 
anyone's been rude to you, point them out to me. I will have them thrown into an icy river, then exiled. For that. <laughs> Excuse me, Pilexevich. I must have a word with you. The Tsaritsa of Tokia has left the palace to return to the Kremlin. the wooden palace. I'm moving to the Kremlin so that people can see we're not living together anymore. I should use the whip your father gave me. Have you forgotten who you are? On the contrary, I have remembered it. You don't expect me to appear to share you with this... this laundress, do you? Poor Anna Mons. We should compare notes on what it's like to be betrayed. Where's Alexis? He's already in the Kremlin. I hope you are not thinking of taking Alexis back by force. Even you must care what people will think about tearing a child away from its mother. I prefer to keep some semblance of peace with you. For political reasons, if nothing else. But understand this. Catherine is not Anna Mons. Now, what does that mean? It means that nothing in this world is permanent. Even the wives of Tsars. As you were, gentlemen. This place never changes. With Azov, we have liberated ourselves from the heel of the Turk and opened a seaway to warm water ports in the east. However, that is only the beginning. Our immediate task is to build a deep water navy to gain free access to the west through the Baltic Sea now controlled by the Swedes. It will be expensive. To pay for it, the state will draft people and taxes will be levied from which no one will be exempt. Not boyars, merchants or peasants, not even the church. Never in its life has Russia had or needed a fleet. And it still lives. Without trade, Russia will always be in the shadow of its western neighbors. There can be no trade without merchant ships. No merchant ships without a navy to protect them. And no navy without ports. It's our purpose to share the Baltic Sea. We will build a new and great port to be named St. Petersburg. I hadn't heard about that new city before. Are you naming it after yourself? After St. Peter, you present. <laughs> now, we are taking Alexis sailing today. I must teach him to be a good sailor. 
You'd think I was taking him to a bear hunt. You've taken him to a slaughter at Azov. Wasn't that enough? When will you bring him back? Tomorrow. I'm not taking him to the Arctic. Yet. I might just keep him. He would only hate you more for it. And protect the Tsarevich from every tribulation, wrath and necessity above and below the water. Preserve him from the weaknesses of his sinful guardians. Amen. Amen. <coughs> it's time to go, Alexis. Bless me, Father Jacob. Twenty of these oars and five men to each oar. That means this ship can go as fast as almost any horse. As fast as when it's galloping? Yes. What happens if you swallow water? Keep your mouth closed when your head is under water. Your head is under water? Anyway, don't worry about it now. It's a sailing lesson. You can do everything. Yes, Papa. Now, I want you to try it all by yourself. I don't think I can. Of course you can. You're my son. Just turn the rudder to the right. You said left before. Turn the rudder to the right. No, no, to turn the rudder to the right, you have to turn the tiller to the left. What's the tiller? Just push it the other way. Now pull the boom to you. Get down! Ah! The first time I tried to sail, I went into the water too. General Gordon had to help me. You take him. He needs me. You have a meeting with the Patriarch. He'll wait. Stop crying, Alexis. You're my son. Oh, he's just a child. He's a child. He will be Alexis II of Russia. He can't be taken back to his mother. Every time something goes wrong. It's very hard for him. He's torn between his parents. Let's just get something dry on him. No. We didn't understand until today that the Tsar's purpose was only incidentally to punish the Muslim infidels. He now intends to push out into the West, to trade with foreigners and heretics, until we become dependent on them, and eventually become like them. He's going to draft men for a huge army and navy, but worst of all, he intends to tax the church. You must help. Surely you know that the Tsar and I barely talk to each other. But I believe that inwardly he must feel guilt for what he's doing. If you exploit that... No. He's still my husband. I'm not yet ready to plot against him. <laughs> We're protesting openly to him, Tsaritsa. That's not a plot. I'm not clever enough to deal with him. Oh, <laughs> You underestimate your spiritual powers. You need Sophia. There's no other match for him. 
Someone might have to go dressed as a priest. That is plotting. If we pursue this, may we at least rely on your silence. Yes. As if Tokia separated from me and I openly lived with Catherine, the ashes of dissidence smoldered again. My need to open a window to the west and tax the church to do it united Sophia, the boyars, and the patriarch against me. The smoldering ashes would be raked into flames. It's father. Is he really here? Alone, with a small escort. Why are you always trying to see your father? Do you think he really loves you? If he cares for you so much, why is he living in the wooden palace and you are living here in the Kremlin? not coming. You should know what to expect from your father by this time, Alexis. I want to go down to see him. I prefer that you didn't. I don't understand why you should be involved in this nonsense with the Patriarch. We are both only obeying your grandfather. You weren't even born when Sir Michael was alive. But my grandfather was. <laughs> then my father. And Sokhorukov's father, he told him. Stupid fool. What does that old fraud have to do with this? Hmm? He shares with me your grandfather's trust. Then your father's after him. What trust? I didn't know you weren't speaking terms with him. If you expect this council to function at all, the two opposite sides must be civil to one another. Come with me. I have something to show you. Michael's vault. What has the Patriarch to do with it? Without his blessing, we will not dare to open it. Open it. Trust to be used only for Russia's rainy day. 
I do not consider this a rainy day. Taxing the church will provoke one. Whose side are you on? Yours. Ask him to tell you truthfully if he wants you to tax the church. If you do, it will bring you down. And maybe the dynasty. Which he most devoutly desires. I will use this and tax the church. Look, if you will stop laughing at me for one moment, I want to try something. Keep still. There. Now, let's see. Let me see. Ah. Oh. You know, you look like an angel. <laughs> yes, it's true. Don't apologize. Nobody told Be you. quiet. I want to talk to you. Um, may I present Princess Maria Sukorukova? I remember you as a child. <laughs> you were very pretty, though. Even prettier now. Thank you, sire. Leave us alone. Please. More than an afternoon's pleasure? She's very young. I know. But I've fallen in love. <laughs> Marvelous feeling, isn't it? I'm afraid her father will take a very dim view of a suitor who's not only a Jew, but loyal to the Tsar. <clears throat> That's an understatement. Loyal. I count on that. What I have in mind for you will make you even less popular with him. In what way? I intend to build a fleet of ocean-going warships. But you have no access to the sea? Not your concern. Encountered continued opposition from both the church and the boyards. For too long, if I may say so, sir. You're going to be my eyes and my ears, and if necessary, my hand. I want you to revitalize the Office of Secret Affairs. You will function inside the law, outside the law. Whatever I need to know, you will find out. Whatever I need done, you will do. You will be responsible only to me and in dealing with opposition. How far do you want to go? As far as you have to. She's very pretty, but be careful. Her father is my sworn enemy. I know you. Please don't lie to me. I know oh, you have been seeing this man. I have no intention of lying to you, Father. I have. How can you brazenly admit that to me? If you don't want me to lie, I have to admit. Don't you? Will you leave us, Aphrosina? Get back to the kitchen. Don't you dare talk to me like that. I am sorry, Father. I love you! Ooh. I only want the best for you. <laughs> I want you to marry a fine Russian noble. What will happen when people learn you have been alone with this Jew, the Tsar's evil genius? Why is he the Tsar's evil genius? You are being impudent again. You have made an accusation. If you want me to obey, you must make me understand. It's too complicated for a woman to understand. Certainly, for a young girl. I'm your daughter. I have the right to some respect. If you will not explain what you mean to me, you must leave me to be guided by my own wits. It doesn't matter how you feel! I forbid you to see Shafirov again. And that is that. Uh, 
Our agents have secured these designs of the latest ships in the Swedish fleet. Will the Dutchman Whitson build us a ship in Holland? I'm sure he would, for a price. I'll pay whatever he asks. We will build the rest of the fleet here, hiring his men as foremen. There's no profit for Whitson supplying us master ship builders so that we can build our own fleet. We would face that problem in any country in Europe. Unless the governments of those countries were allies and ordered their shipbuilders to help us. That is precisely what I had in mind. A concerted effort to secure allies and ships in Europe. How? I'm proposing an embassy to Europe to secure them. And all of us will be going there. All of us, sir? You would go yourself? Certainly. No Tsar has ever left Russia. But people would panic. Your leaving Russia would signal the end of the world to many. It'll add to our problems. I'm afraid that a, a royal visit might drown you in protocol. You, my friends, can be drowned in protocol. I will go incognito. And even if they do recognize me, incognito diminishes all responsibility to me. Arrange for your uncle Nikita to go ahead and work in Whitson shipyard. He will learn how the best work is done and make a note of the men that do it. Before this embassy is finished, we'll all have learned at first hand what made world powers of Sweden, Germany, France and England while Russia slept. You shall forgive me. The Russian people are not going to like being taught by foreigners. The Russian people will do whatever is necessary. We all will. Come. Let's go to supper. It will be an interesting time. I cannot believe anyone would do that voluntarily. You sound as though you were being tortured. Pushes more blood through you. Tones up the brain. Makes you think. You're now a physician, Charles? William Harvey was. Englishman who established the principle of blood circulation. What an extraordinary catalogue of obscure information you carry in that head of yours. I never get over it. I've been meaning to discuss that with you, my dear. You know? It is not enough for a royal spy to frequent the important bids of Europe. You must also include intellectual salons in your itinerary. I doubt I can be as successful there as I've been in bed. Come in. Count Piper. Sire, Countess Desmond. The Russian priest is waiting. Good. Show him in. What are you reading? The Decameron of Boccaccio. It also stimulates the flow of blood. But not through the brain. Read Plato. Your Majesty. Well, Father, thank you for coming. How's the Tsar's mistress, Catherine Savronskaya? Is that her name, Catherine Savronskaya? Uh, Skavronskaya, sire. Oh, uh, they seem quite devoted. But it is so scandalous in the eyes of the church. And the exiled Sophia? She is constantly informed. Do your superiors in Russia know that we pay you for the information that you give us? Hmm. If I were to tell them, I would have to share with them. Thus corrupting them as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, sire. Truly Christian of you. Tsar is about to leave Russia and tour Europe. Purpose? To 
gather allies and ships to engage in world trade. About time, wouldn't you say? Objectively, yes. Subjectively, no. To do that, he needs ports on the open sea. He will want the Baltic ports we took from his grandfather. He also plans to build a new city on our sea. Since you know all this, what is left for me to find out? To what extent is people are resisting this embassy? Any odd information? And how am I to get this encyclopedia together? Visit the court Peter will visit. Be there as a house guest when he arrives. Charm him. The Tsar has tastes simpler than I would satisfy. <laughs> then try Alexander Manchikov or General Gordon. But try the Tsar first. <laughs> now, why don't you share some of the benefits of Bukachu with me? <laughs> Alexis has to go to Europe with us. I don't want to order him, I want to convince him. I think our being together will only make it more difficult for you. No, 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 no. You don't have to get used to it. You I need. You're my strength. <laughs> what is that? A place of execution. was this woman's crime? She killed her husband. Satisfied? Maybe she had a good reason. Maybe you would like to ask her. I would. Go ahead. and enjoyed it. As soon as the children were grown up and needed her no more, she found the courage to kill him and she do it again. Satisfied? I suppose you think you've performed an act of mercy. Of course it's an act of mercy. Do you know how long it takes to die in the ground? If the husband had killed the wife, would he be in the ground? Of course not. That's different. I thought so. There is law. The law can be changed, but where it exists, it must be enforced. And the Tsar's obligation is to enforce it, impartially on man or woman, peasant or prince. Without mercy? On anyone? On anyone.
please remember everything Father Jacob and I taught you to say. Sire. Father? Will you take tea, Peter Alexeyevich? Why four cups? I thought we would all have tea and a nice chat. I assumed you understood. I came to see my son alone. We know what you've come for. Surely something so important should be discussed in the presence of Alexis' mother and a priest. Get out, madam. Get out! And take this priest with you. Out! 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 Now, you and I can have our conversation. Man to man. Why are you growing a beard? Because it's a treasure that God provides. Shave it off. You want some vodka, Alexis? I don't really like it. Well, what have they told you? That you are going to leave Russia. Did they tell you why? They said you don't like Russia, that you want to change it and make us the same as the people in Europe. No, Alexis, that is not the reason. I'm going to Europe to learn things, things that will make Russia a better place for ordinary people to live. Father Jacob told me that people are saying if the Tsar leaves Russia to learn the ways of heretics, God will punish the people for his sin. Going to Europe and learning from people of different religions is not a sin. And even if it were, God would punish me, not the people. I came to ask you to come to the West with me. You will be Tsar when I die, and it is time for you to start learning how. What would I do about my studies? You would have a tutor. Father Jacob is my tutor. He can come, if it makes you happy. Mother says it would make her sick. She would miss me. The Tsarevich's duty is to his country before his mother. I have to stay so that the people won't feel totally... Abandoned. That's your mother talking. Don't you have a brain of your own? I don't know. I just don't want to go. I want you to go because it's the right thing for you to do. But that's only part of the reason. This is going to be a great adventure. And I want you to share it with me, like any father and any son. Don't leave me, father. I love you, Alexis. I can't go with you. Thanks you. I want to talk to you. I have guests. That's what I want to talk to you about. Are you and those idiots in there planning to stop the Tsar from leaving Russia? You must be in a hurry to become a martyr. To drive Satan from the Tsar, one must sacrifice everything. The Tsar may have axes, swords and pistols to fight Satan's battle, but we have the power of the true faith to 
save the Tsar's soul. What's your power anyway? Just words. Sounds. Like puffs of wind. You cannot silence the wind. My fellow boyars may fear to be heard, but I will speak for them, nevertheless. Sire, by this unprecedented act of leaving Russia, you deeply wound the common people. They are bereft and frightened and resentful of you. I am concerned with the future of the dynasty itself. I beg you to reconsider. Tsukurukov, if you haven't understood by now, you will never understand. I must go to Europe. Good day, gentlemen. Komodanovsky. Of course you can, sire. I might be away for a long time. You will rule Russia for me. You must crush conspiracies, cut off heads, and watch my sister. If she makes the slightest move, kill her. Sir, may I speak with you privately? Of course. Thank you. Did you know that this Jew you elevated to power now wishes to marry my daughter? Remember St. Paul's words, let there be no Jews nor Gentiles, but all in Christ. But St. Paul didn't marry. That's true. He said, marriage is good, no marriage is better. It's dangerous. It's better to have enemies you're aware of. What made you decide to come to see me? If the people lose the Tsar to the West, we lose the monarchy. No, we won't. Alexis is growing up. He believes in the true faith. He rejects his father's ideas. The longer Peter is out of Russia, the longer we have to prepare our future. The future? You don't think I'm going to stay here and die, do you? Would you use force again? Perhaps. For the sake of his fleet, Peter will empty Sir Michael's treasury and tax the church as well. That would be a heavy cross to bear, wouldn't it? Now, you haven't told me the other reason that you came here. What is that, Zarevna? If we get rid of the Tsar, you get rid of the Jew.
your father there? Yes, but he seems to be all right. Some other people were hurt. Sometimes I don't understand you, Peter Alexeyevich. Destiny may ride with us today, but I don't see any reason why it should interfere with lunch. didn't make a mistake with the pheasant. Well, they eat mostly game, you know. You'd better have extra balls at the table for the bones. They don't keep them on the plates. <laughs> what do you mean? After they suck the bones dry, Russians throw them back into the serving platters. What? With fresh food still on them? That's why you need the balls. They suck the bones and throw them back. And then they wipe the fingers on their toes. Oh, barbarians. <laughs> As a father, I understand your feelings. I must understand your feelings. Believe me. Believe me. I'm writing a letter to Alexis. Good. It's time to resolve our differences, although he's bound to reject whatever I say. I'll tell him I'm going to find a wife for him in Europe, and God willing, a grandson to come out of it. Very good. You can bring him back to you. Oh, make a note to Shafirov. He's to transfer half the gold to Amsterdam. That will guarantee the wages of the foreign workers will send back. Forgive me, Peter Alexeyevich, but you don't understand the feelings of ordinary people about foreigners. In their blood, they know. Foreigners have been nibbling away at Russia for generations. Mongols from the east, Muslims from the south, Swedes and Poles from the west. Then they must also know that this is precisely what I've sworn to stop. All they know is they see a foreigner, worse, a group of foreigners in strange clothing and without beards, and that's a threat. You have to prepare them for it. Have Romodanovsky collect the capital tax on merchants and boyars and the first of the church taxes. All at once. Let me finish my letter, please. All at once is a mistake, even though you don't want to hear it. I also want reports from Shafirov on the reactions to the taxes. You will have them all on your back at once. Church, nobility, and merchants. One at a time. The natural animosity might work for you. Wrong. One big shock, and they will get over it. If you do one after the other, the wounds will never heal. That's not the way my father thinks, and he's typical. Ah, so that's it, Alexander. In spite of everything, part of you is still in your backyard. Must you do that? You should see him eat fish. Uh, my dear Catherine, how did you meet the Tsar? I was a prisoner of the Tartars. He rescued me. And how were the Tartars? Dirty. <laughs> <laughs> Are you with the Tsar as a military observer, General? 
as one is never permitted to observe anything of the slightest military significance when visiting a foreign country, no ma'am, as a friend. Good. Soldiers bore me. But, uh, what about King Charles? Oh, he has turned it into an art form. No terrible thumping of boots and all that. Ah, I see. Then I shall try to remember to walk very quietly. <laughs> Your Majesties, ladies and gentlemen, the minuet. Will you grant me the dance, Mother? It's kind of you to ask, Your Majesty. But I'm not very good at it. Nor am I. The movements are too slow and delicate. I prefer country dancing. More vigorous? Less French? Exactly. You do this very well. For a bear. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, yes. I know in your private homes you describe us half bear, half man. I must admit I've heard that phrase, but like most prejudice, it is clearly unfounded. <laughs> There's something you can do for me. Mm -hmm. Do you have any experience as a matchmaker? Only with myself. <laughs> I'm looking for a wife for my son, Alexis. A line that produces predominantly male children. Oh, there are several families well known for that, and some of their daughters are here tonight. Ah. Can you point them out to me? Well, of course. Now, this is the daughter of the Baron von Greitz. Hmm? Who is that? Oh, that is Louise, the favorite child of the Duke of Wolfenbüttel. Can I meet her? Certainly. I'll bring her to you, all right? Thank you. May I present to you Louise of Wolfenbüttel. Very pleased to meet you. This is my friend Peter Tolstoy. Pleased to meet you. How many languages do you speak? My father employs French and Italian tutors. And are you fluent in those languages? Oh, yes, sire. What about the history of those countries? Yes, sire. Does she know why I wanted to meet her? But of course. All right. I will communicate with your father. As you will, sire. Thank you, Your Highness. Thank you. Enjoy yourself. My pleasure. Taking into account the uncertainties of life, Alexis will undoubtedly follow him to the throne. I will have to meet the Tsarevich and see myself. I don't think that's the way it's done in Russia. I'm not Russian. <laughs> You'll make an interesting daughter-in-law for the Tsar. Very interesting indeed, my dear. Find out about the family health, any feeble-minded offspring, portions of sons and so forth. If she seems right, we'll send her to Moscow. <laughs> Is it considered to be rude in Europe to discuss business on social occasions? It is, as everyone does it. Good, because I'm impatient to talk to you. Please. Excuse me, gentlemen. Thank you, my dear. You have the best metal workers in Europe. I would like to employ some. 
What would they make? Well, can it? We jealously guard our military artisans, Peter Alexeyevich. We have enemies. I would not ask if I were not prepared to divide them with you. Them? Sweden. We are a small state. You are the largest country in the world. <laughs> Large allies have been known to swallow small allies. You have my word that we have no territorial ambitions in your direction. I accept your word. But your successor might not honor it. Your heir may not be as strong and forceful as you are. In my lifetime, you will be king of Prussia and of all northern Germany. Neither I nor my heirs would be able to contest you. How many men do you need? Consider myself a lucky man. Is the tallest lady ill? Uh, not that I know of. Daniel. Well, tell me. I'm carrying your child. <laughs> she looks extraordinary, Robert. Extraordinary. so early. I'm sorry, but we are rather early risers. Where are you going next? Holland, I believe. The Dutch are great sailors, but as allies, rather hard to catch. Very probably. But do you not think your friend Charles might be a little apprehensive of a bear that swims? Justifiably. I couldn't say. You know him. I do not. It's a shame you have to go. Couldn't you ride on after them? Absolutely not. Tsar is very demanding. May I travel with you? No. Does the Tsar demand celibacy too? No, but I do. However, that is not the point. The point is, I could never afford you, my dear.
pray especially hard, Alexis. Your father's laundress is pregnant. What? Do you know what that means? It is God's will. I'm talking about the succession. A bastard child could never become Tsar. It has happened before. Not in Russia. Satan has made your father swear to change Russia. Sire, Sarevich, Alexei Petrovich, our father, excuse us for this, for being here. Ask how you may serve your people. How may I serve my people? The Tsar's taxes have taken our last slice of bread. Everyone is going to die. I have no power to help you. Be positive. Give us hope, sire. We beg you. I'm the Tsarevich. I'm not the Tsar. My father has guided our lives. I will ask his help. We pray only that you try. Tell Tsar Peter Alexeyevich of our needs. I promise that I will. father will soon find out what the people are thinking. I'm going to write to him. I want to hear from him, in his own words, what he intends for this bastard child. I will take the letter and see it is sent to him. Good. of shipbuilding interests you most? Launching. <laughs> I thought so, you old thief. Remember your shredded uniforms? You will be apprenticed to a sailmaker. Count Tolstoy. Well, it seems to me I'd be more useful to you in the Dutch court. Show me your hands. Turn them around. The hands of a diplomat. I think the precision art of cocking will be more useful to you. <laughs> General Gordon. As I recall, I joined up as a soldier, sire, not as a shipwright. However, I realize that all this is very important to the Russian soul. Your point is well taken. We'll stay the winter, Minha Whitson, and finish the ship. I will learn the use of the anvil and forge, if I may. It will be my pleasure, sire. To the simple joys of hard labor, gentlemen. <laughs> beside us in this shipyard. Therefore, I am empowered by the guilds of the shipwrights of Amsterdam to award these certificates of membership <laughs> to Count Tolstoy, <laughs> attesting to his ability as a master talker. <laughs> Of 
the Sailmakers Club. is more important to me than this. To <laughs> all of you who will be coming to Russia with us. <laughs> I look forward to working side by side with you. <laughs> we, Peter, of Russia will name this ship of the line City of Amsterdam! Yeah. Hurrah! Hurrah! <laughs> is the Patriarch. I think it best that the Holy Father not be involved. Sofia, Alexevna, this is the new Streltsy commander, General Ivan Gapakov. My lady. Yevdakia, what made you decide to join our little circle? The birth of Elizabeth to the Tsar and his mistress. So you think Peter would replace Alexis with a girl? You were a girl. You became regent. <laughs> What's my mother discussing with them? Your father's plans for war when he returns. I don't believe my father wants to take us to war. He took you to Azov. That was different. The Turks attacked us. The Swedes attacked your great-grandfather. It's the same thing. Except now, the port your father wants to take back from them will be used to bring all kinds of heresy to us. It's impossible to talk to you. When my father replies to my letter, we will know all the answers. Father Jacob has sent it to him. And what makes you so sure that, um... Peter's Jew. Shafirov. That Shafirov is not communicating the extent of public unrest to the Tsar. Their dispatches back and forth are intercepted. I'm seeing to it, personally. All of the dispatches? Yes, all of them. The accounts of public disapproval, a conciliatory letter from the Tsar to his son, a questioning one from the Tsarevich to his father. What do you do with these? They are rewritten, and the signatures are forged. And what about the couriers? They are killed. Tell me your plan. We will begin with protests against the first foreign workers that arrive. I will personally take a unit of Streltsy on maneuvers. Fires will be started in the city. We will then attack and seize the Kremlin. And then you'll execute Peter and his supporters? That's not my business. That is in God's hands. Oh, now I prefer more earthly reassurance. It's the only area in which I have agreement with my brother. Will you kill him? As you command.
I know traveling with a child is hard, but he's tough. She. I know you wanted a boy. Yes. Then you made me realize that a sister is less of a threat to Alexis. There's no reason for anyone to be threatened by Elizabeth. I'm not your wife. She's not a legitimate heir. What do you want? For Tsar, divorce is unthinkable. Unless his wife becomes a nun. And there's no way I can force her to key onto a convent because she's perfectly innocent. How do you know? The dispatches you get never answer the questions you ask. Dinner is served, sire. Thank God, I'm hungry. His Majesty's waiting. Thank you. How could men have fought in medieval times with this much weight on them? They all wore armor, thus sharing the inconvenience it imposed. I have another question. Please. Why do they call it the British Channel? Because it is the British Channel. But its waves break on the mainland of France as well as on the British Isles. Why don't they call it the French Channel? Possibly because we have the larger navy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, please sit down, sire. Now to business. In the matter of the ship's plans. What have you decided? Since the Dutch have yet to invent the Matrix, we will agree to teach you that draftsman's craft and draw matrices of the city of Amsterdam after the fact. That will make the relationship between theory and practice quite clear to your people. Good, good. That's more than I had hoped for. Did you really work with your hands beside common shipwrights? <laughs> ah. Now, our needs in the matter of the tobacco, we're prepared to pay you 25,000 pounds for the privilege of being the sole importers to your country, hmm. free of custom duties of a million and a half pounds of tobacco. I suppose you're getting a bargain. Oh, I don't know. You got your cannon from Frederick, your ship from the Dutch, the matrices that will enable you to build your own ships from us. These are bargains. When you export to Germany, France, Holland, your tobacco is charged a heavy duty. I assume you're getting a better bargain with us, right? You are clever, Peter, but uh, try not to be too clever. Huh? Have you ordered Sir Isaac Newton to receive me? Oh, Peter, I can't order a man like Sir Isaac. Why not? I envy your autocracy. Parliament permits me to order very little. You are exaggerating. Uh, no, I'm regularly debated, but then defeated in Parliament. However, I have asked Sir Isaac to receive you. Gordon will take you to him. <laughs> 